Let's stop there. Let's stop there. Because that's the question I'm asking you. The question I'm asking you also is that what's the difference between a conflicted killer who is on death row and a sinner? I would say that's no difference, isn't it? My next question is this. Who do you think will be very, very happy? Is it somebody who is being on death row maybe for 10 years? You know, in America, there are some people on death row for 30 years that they have, they have been convicted that they are going to die. And they grant them amnesty. Or what, they call it, what do they call it? Amnesty. And they will say, they will come to them. They will say to them, and they will say, Oh, Mr. K, our president is granting amnesty now. And he wants to release some people who have been on death row. And you are one of them. And he's taking him out of the jail, out of the secure unit, into the, into the community. How do you think that offender will feel? Very what? Very happy? What do you think will happen to the people around that offender? Somebody that has been on death row for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and what, all of a sudden, the, the thing is reversed. And they said, you are not, we, are, we are pardoning you of your offense, so the death penalty that has been issued against you is cancelled, and now you have the gift of life. You cannot come out from the secure unit, the one that has been, that has been monitored, they put everything, they make sure everything is secure, monitored, is now coming to become a free man. He will be very happy, isn't it? Yeah. And the family, they will be rejoicing. Yeah. Even they will celebrate that something has happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the thing is this. What will happen to me? What will happen to you? What will happen to every one of us when we have Jesus Christ who <clears throat> deliver us? The Bible says, for the wages of sin is what? Is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then why are we not following Jesus Christ. Why are Christians not following Jesus Christ? Why are Christians not following what Jesus Christ has done? When the Bible says the wages of sin is death, and the gift of it of God, of, of the gift of eternal life of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why are we not following it? What is the problem with us, Christians? What is the problem with the body of Christ? What is the problem with the church of God that Christ died for? He paid the price of their death with his own life. Because until we understand it that way, then we will not know the value of what Christ has done. Then why do you have problems in our churches today? Why do you have problems with brothers? Why do you have problems today with sisters? Why do you have, why do you have, why do pastors have problems today? Why do you have problems between churches today? Why do you have problems within, within the group that call themselves Christian today? Why do we have this problem? Maybe pastor can, can answer this question for me. Is it because we don't follow what Christ has done, or we don't know the, the, the integrity of what we, we don't know the integrity of what we are facing, Pastor? It's, it's, it's basically the ignorance of what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. What you are saying is right. It's the ignorance of what He has done that is making us fight in ourselves. Mm. It's simple, because we have good understanding of what He has done. We should love one another as a body of Christ. Because we are all joined together in one spirit in Christ. So, can this hand fight my leg? No. Can my leg fight my head? No. Because they are working together. So, but if my hand does not understand that it is part of my body, and my eye don't understand that it is part of my body, and they are also to work together to give me an advantage in life, then they'll be fighting one another. I will not be able to achieve my purpose. If my eye is fighting my hand, my hand is fighting my leg, and they are hitting one another. I'll be paralyzed. So Christ feels the pain of what the church is doing to themselves. He's feeling it because it's affecting his general purpose for us. So, so it is the lack of understanding, like you are saying, of what Christ has done for us that is making us right ourselves. 
So which means many of us today we don't follow what Christ has done because we don't know the importance. We don't follow it because we don't know the importance of what he has done. If every one of us as Christians we can see from that perspective that look, if a confident, confident offender, if, he's, if that person is to die and that person is released, he will follow it more. But we don't follow our faith. We don't follow our stand. We don't follow it more. We don't follow it like that. We don't. Because of the fact that we don't have the understanding. And the Bible says, my people perish because of what? Lack of understanding. If you look at the, book, the same book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Which means the sin that, that we commit that sin is for everybody. Everybody has sin and falling short of the glory of God. It's not, you, nobody can say, yes, I'm the one that saved myself. None of us can boast of what we have we've done to be saved. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody here who can boast that, look, I, I am the one that saved myself. I decided to be saved. Then I am saved. That's nobody can boast of that. If you look again in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 12, he said, Therefore, I sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so sin spread to all men, because all have sinned. And the problem of sin began in the beginning. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 3, if you read forward, we will see how men disobey God. And that is this, this, the day of that disobedience, God has been looking for a way of bringing us back unto Himself. In the past, people used scapegoat, they would do a lot of sacrifice, but that sacrifice cannot pay the price. And Jesus Christ came and He paid the price for your sin, He paid the price for my sin. It's like He liberated you from your debt. Death penalty from your, from your guilt of death. He liberated you and gave you life. Like somebody who is, being, who is in, a, in, a, in a secure unit and just waiting for the day that you will be executed. And let me tell you something today. Anybody who doesn't have Christ has no life. Mm -hmm. My brother, hello sir. Anybody who doesn't have Christ has what? I have no life. I have no life. And I will explain to you. I will explain to you why. And I will explain to you why. Why anybody doesn't have Christ I have no life. You know why? You see this. Immediately somebody has been arrested and has been given a guilty verdict that is judged and condemned, and that person is to be executed. That day is, is right, is human right is gone. No more human right. When they say you are you are guilty of your offense and you are liable to the world to, 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 to be executed. That day, that right, right to become human being, human right is what is gone. No more no more right. You can't listen, you can't say you want to listen to news. A convicted offender who is, who, is to, who is to be executed, what to listen to news? Where? Is it in that place? They don't know when they, they, they don't know when they will say it's their turn to be killed. Have you ever watched a program on the TV when they are talking about um, people, who are, people who, are to, who are on death row in America? They normally do it on, on TV. Mm -hmm. You need to watch it. If you watch it, you will, be, you, you will know. That the freedom that we have, we should not lose it. Praise the Lord. They can just decide at any day without informing them. They will just ring and say, it's the next, is that Mr. Labaja is, uh, is, is, is next. And let's take him down. And that's it. They can say, Mrs. Labaja, it is this time. Let's take, him, let's take her out. And that is all. And that's the life that people live. The life that people live, and everyone will say, you read the Bible, say, the, the, the message of the kingdom is foolishness unto them that are perishing, but unto all that are saved is the power of God unto what? Unto salvation. So if 
You, are, if you don't believe in God, you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Your life is just like the life of a man that has been convicted of, that has been given the penalty. That it's just a matter of time. If somebody can be on death row for 30 years, can be on death row for 40 years, can be on death row for 60 years, can be on death row for 15 years, can be on death row for 10 years, is when the time comes, they will just pick him and say, look, it's your turn. So the question I want to ask you is this. If you don't have Jesus, as you are watching me, if you don't have Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, it's like you are on death row. You don't have any right. You don't have any right. You don't have any life. It's just a matter of time. You can say you are, prosper, you are prosperous. What is prosperity of a man? who is living outside the purpose and the will of God. What is that prosperity? You can say you have a lot of things. What, what is the gain? What is the purpose of what all those things that you have without Christ? Let me tell you, you are on a death row without Jesus Christ. It's a matter of time that they will say it's your turn. And when we say, when they say it's your turn, that's so far. There's nobody, when the time of death comes, that can say, can have you, can say, no. I'm not going. Praise the Lord. There's nobody. When the time for them to die is, is right, that will say no. No, I'm not going. Have you ever seen anybody like that before? I watch a, I watch a film. I watch a film. A film in my local language. And that film is about somebody who sees death. And this man will see when death is coming, the death will go on the people and put cap on their head. And this man, when it was his turn, death, Mr. Death came to, to his house to put cap on him. He, won, he was running away. He was running away, he was running away, he was running away until he got to a place and he was tired. Do you know what first took him? Sleep. He slept off where he was. And Mr. Death just put cap on him. So what I'm trying to say is that there's nobody that can run away from death. But the only thing that can save you from death is Jesus Christ. When you have Christ, you have life. My brother said, he's been transformed. His life has been transformed. He's seated in heavenly places. He's seated with God. He's seated with Christ by the side of God. He's seated. He's got a life. Jesus Christ said, I'm the resurrection and the life. So for you to have Christ, you are not going to die. You will be translated. People that believe in Christ, they will not die. And that is, that's why the Bible says, the sting of death is gone. Death has been what? I've been cap, I've, I've, death, why the sting of death? Death is gone. The sting of what? Okay, the dead have been swallowed up in victory. And that's why when a Christian died, we are not supposed to mourn. Because they went to rest. Because Christian, a, a, a Christian will not die. A Christian will be translated, transisted. But when you don't have Christ, you don't have life. That dead judgment that has been pronounced, that will say, for all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. That death pronounced that's on you. It's a matter of time. It's like somebody on death row. When the time comes, you will soon die. And the only dangerous thing is that it's very, very dangerous for you to die without Christ. So as we are celebrating the resurrected Christ, the death and his resurrection, as we are celebrating it now, I want to employ you to take a look at your life. It is not too late now to make a stand and come to the knowledge of Christ and accept Jesus Christ as your 